Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Puccini's La Boheme with conductor Giacomo Sagripanti, which I saw at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. This marked the third time I saw this particular production of La Boheme because Attilio Glaza was making his role debut as Rodolfo. Now for those of you who know me, I've been following Mr. Glaza's career for about four to five years now. I first saw him in some small parts such as Arturo from Lucia della Mermur and Flavio from Norma and these days he is coming into his own in the lyric tenor repertoire especially with leading male roles such as the Duke from Rigoletto and his most recent ventures with Alfredo from La Traviata and of course Rodolfo from La Boheme. What I noticed about his voice is that it grew in coordination and in a fair amount of richness and a lot of passion. He was able to make his voice ring, especially in the upper register. And that's where I thought his strengths really were because they sounded a lot more developed and they sound like they could have a lot more potential to become a lot more polished and bloom a lot more. Sure, in the first half of the opera, especially in his aria, Que Gelida Manina, he did sound rather tentative, especially in the lower register. But he got a lot better in the later parts of the opera, to the point where I recognize that his voice does take a bit of time for it to warm up, but once it reaches its full potential, it's absolutely fine. And yes, it is true that I have a lot of favorite Rodolfos at my disposal. Voices such as Enrico Caruso, Beniamino Gigli, Giacomo Lauri Volpi, Ferruccio Tagliavini, Giacinto Prandelli, Galliano Massini, Giuseppe Di Stefano, Gianni Raimondi, Franco Corelli, and even the likes of Luciano Pavarotti and Jerry Hadley come into my mind because those tenors had far more well-developed techniques and of course they were more uniform in all of the registers especially when you have the older singers such as Enrico Caruso, Giacomo Lauri Volpi, Giacinto Prandelli and Giuseppe Di Stefano. So my tip for Attilio Glaza is to listen to these aforementioned tenors and also look at what they do with their mouths so that once he gets an impression and an idea of what he should truly improve on as a singer, then I'm pretty sure that his voice will reach new heights in terms of development, and I'm pretty sure that his voice will go in a great direction, especially in the full lyric tenor repertoire or even the spinto tenor repertoire. I would love to see him perform roles such as Carlo from Imaz Nadieri, Arrigo from I Vespri Siciliani, Ruggero from La Rondine, Arvino from I Lombardi alla Prima Crociata, and even Take on Polone from Norma. As soon as he develops his voice, complete with more coordination, better chest tones, and a more fully realized voice that can be able to sing over an orchestra, I'm pretty sure that Attilio Glaza can be able to rise above and really prove himself to be an exceptional singer. Thomas Lehmann also made his role debut as Marcello. And what more can I say about this gentleman? He was able to give the goods in terms of this particular painter. Everything about his stage presence was energetic, charismatic, strong, and hypnotic to the point where I was completely hooked with his overall performance. Yes, in the first half of the opera, he did give in to some mask singing, which didn't really sound that great, but if I were to take that away, his voice still sounded rather full and rich. And I'm pretty sure that with a lot more training, a lot more development, that voice of his will reach dramatic baritone heights. As for me, I also have a lot of favorite Marcellos that I root for, such as Carlo Tagliabue, Sesto Bruscantini, Gian Giacomo Guelfi, Rolando Panderai, Matteo Manuguera, Aldo Protti, 
Tetti, Tito Gobbi, Ettore Bastianini, and even my personal favorites, Giuseppe Taddei and Robert Merrill. I'm pretty sure that if Thomas Lehmann also took some tips from watching a few videos starring Robert Merrill or even Giuseppe Taddei and what they do with their mouths when they're singing and what is to be expected from the overall vocal quality because of how well developed their voices are, especially in singing roles like this. Oh, unless I forget about Mario Sereni, who is also my personal favorite, Marcello, as he also had such an aristocratic voice. So I'm pretty sure that if Thomas Lehmann can take the time to watch a few videos starring Robert Merrill and even listen to his voice to see what he does and even to hear what he does, I'm pretty sure that he can put it into practice so that he can also take on more challenging roles such as Il Conte di Luna from Trovatore, Francesco Moore from Masnadieri, and many other great roles for a true baritone. So here's hoping that Thomas Lehmann's career will continue to go from strength to strength. And here's also hoping that he will stay as tall, strong, and formidable as ever. Mariangela Sicilia was a solid Mimi. I also heard her voice a year ago when she sang this role alongside Nicola Laimo as Marcello and Hasmik Torosian as Musetta. While I do like the timbre of her voice, which is rather silvery yet creamy and has a very lovely texture to it to the point where I can go out of my way to say that her voice is a lyric soprano voice with a lot of potential. There were times that there were some problem spots that I noticed about Miss Sicilia's voice. What was so noticeable was that in her first aria, Mi Chiama No Mimmi, there were times that her chest tones sounded hollow and collapsed, which was a big shame because Mariangela Sicilia has a naturally fine instrument. It's just that there were some areas that sounded rather collapsed, unsupported, and should have used a lot more chest and a lot more fullness to convey the passion and the overall vivacity that this character has even though she's rather sickly. So the first half of the opera was her not really at her best but at least she still had her timbre intact. I thought that she was able to be a lot better in the second half of the opera. That was when her voice warmed up a little bit more to the point where it did sound a little bit fuller, especially in her second aria, Don Delieta Ushi, where she did have some places where she could use her chest tones. And even before that aria, I thought she was able to improve rather well. Was it a dramatic improvement? Not really by a long shot, but it was an improvement nonetheless, as her instrument has a lot of potential to grow to such greater heights, and I do hope that she does not give in to bad habits. It is true that I can never ignore such awesome voices such as Claudia Muzio, Rosetta Pampanini, Mercedes Capsir, Josefina Huguet, Dorothy Kirsten, Licia Albanese, Renata Tebaldi, Bido Sayao, Alice Esti, Lotta Schöne, Victoria de los Angeles, Montserrat Caballé, Adriana Maliponte, Mirella Freni, Maria Chiara, and even the likes of Helen Kwon, who had much richer fuller and more developed voices, especially when it comes to singing the chest tones and even reaching up to some high notes with all the support that they need. With Mariangela Sicilia, she still has a rather long way to go, especially where the chest tones are concerned. And once she develops those chest tones, once she keeps everything coordinated, and once she's able to improve the overall quality of her voice, that would be a lyric soprano who could be able to sing more challenging roles such as Amalia from Imaz Nadieri, Antonia from Le Comte of Man, Luisa Miller, Magda from La Rondine, Medora 
from Il Corsaro, and maybe even Giselda from Il Lombardi and Giovanna d'Arco. The possibilities set for Mariangela Sicilia are absolutely endless. And I'm sure that with sufficient development and going into the right direction with her voice, she can definitely reach heights as, as long as she keeps improving her technique. And of course, as long as she is able to do it with passion. There was no doubt that Elena Talagova stole the show as Musetta. And what more can I expect from someone as awesome, dedicated, and truly brilliant as Elena Talagova, a soprano whose career I've been following for many years and who proved herself to be one of the finest singers I have ever witnessed. Her overall tone was uniform all the way through. She managed to make a great use of her voice to the point where I continue to be in awe. This is a well-disciplined, well-schooled, and an absolutely brilliant silvery voice that can reach great heights in everything that she is doing as of now. Her technique was as always excellent and she was absolutely outstanding as Musetta to the point where I thought she was able to stand above all the rest of the main singers. And interestingly enough, I would also love to hear her sing Mimi from this very same opera and even Antonia from Le Comte of Man, as I feel that those roles are definitely going to be for her. And what I noticed about Elena Salagova in terms of her voice and in terms of how she sang Musetta is that that is a voice that will one day sing the role of Mimi and will shine like the most brilliant of stars. So I really have to give it to Elena Salagova for doing an exceptional job as Musetta and for being an absolutely strong and brilliant singer. Philip Yekal was all right as Chonal. He had charisma and he had a lot to work off in terms of his overall stage presence and in terms of what he was able to do with this character. However, I'm not so crazy about the lack of richness in his voice and for not having a lot of support in terms of what he emits from his voice. I would love to hear a lot more richness in his voice and I would love to see him grow in terms of the right way because if you think about it, there are many other Shalnas who have much richer voices than Mr. Yekar, such as Jenny Mafeo, who also sang the likes of Il Conte de Luna and Carlo from La Forza del Destino, and even John Reardon, Rolando Panerai, and many other great baritones who embodied Shauna. As for Philip Yekal, his voice still has potential to grow. As long as he gets rid of the mask singing, and as long as he continues to develop his technique in the right way, and make his voice become a lot chestier and stronger, especially on all the low notes, then I'm pretty sure that would be a baritone who will end up becoming a lot more solid in terms of his technique and in terms of his skills as a singer. Tobias Keha was a tall, handsome, and absolutely fine Colin a role that he has been singing for quite some time. Sure, his rendition of Vecchiazzimara did sound a bit shaky, but I think to his credit, it was just how much emotion that he was able to give out in this particular aria. And among the men, Tobias Kira did stand out rather well in terms of the size of his voice and in terms of how much smoothness it had throughout all the registers. This was a voice that proved itself to go from strength to strength, and this was a singer whose tall stage presence and whose masculine charm made him so addicting to witness. There was even some wonderfully fine singing from Jörg Schörner's characterful 
and absolutely vibrant Benoit, even though I would have loved to have a much deeper sounding voice sing this part akin to, akin to a basso cantante such as Fernando Corena or even Carlo Badioli, but I digress. He was still able to act the part very well, which he has always done for those years that he's been singing this particular part. Peta Maus's equally characterful and equally fun Alcindoro, which could have also been given to a bass baritone or a bass, but I completely digress as Peta Maus was able to have a lot of fun with his character, and I could still see a lot of enthusiasm in his movements. Gideon Papa's charming, lyrical, and rather mesmerizing Parpignol, whose light lyric tenor voice made him an absolute standout in a role that is thanklessly small, but proves itself to be rather charming, and of course, Gideon Papa knew how to make it work. And Matthew Cossacks and Timothy Newton's finally sung Sergeant and Customs Officer. So overall, the singing was absolutely fine all around. From the major standouts coming from Tobias Kira's strong and sturdy Colin and Elena Talagova's vibrant, gorgeously sung, and absolutely brilliant Musetta to some singers who continue to show a lot of potential such as Attilio Glazer, Thomas Lehmann, and Mariangela Sicilia, and to some extent Philip Yekal, these singers definitely sold it in their respective roles in their own special way. While I do have other singers, I do prefer singing the roles of Rodolfo and Mimi, I still have to give some credit to Attilio Glaza and Mariangela Sicilia for the hard work they were able to pull off and for how much they were able to play off of each other as the two lovers. And the conducting done by Giacomo Sagripanti was brilliant all around. He whipped up that orchestra to great shape he made sure that everyone went together. And of course, the chorus and orchestra of the Deutsche Oper Berlin were absolutely amazing. So overall, with some solid singing accomplished by Attilio Glaza as a handsome and passionate Rodolfo, some equally passionate singing accomplished by Thomas Lehmann as Marcello, some singing that does show a lot of potential found in Mariangela Sicilia's Mimi, excellent and brilliant singing to be found from Elena Zalagova, and even some solid efforts done by Philip Yekal and Tobias Kira. Tonight's performance of La Boheme was quite a treat. And for those of you who saw this particular production of La Boheme at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, what'd you think of it? Did you feel like Attilio Glaza did a great job singing the role of Rodolfo? Did you feel like the likes of Thomas Lehmann, Mariangela Sicilia, Elena Zalagova, Philip Yekal, and Tobias Kira stole his thunder? Or did you feel like there was someone from the singers that stood out like a sore thumb? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for my review of the Lieder und Dichter concert starring Thomas Lehmann, Annika Schlicht, and Florina Stucki. So until then, good night everybody.